Hello and welcome to Refuse. Now this is like the fourth time I've tried to make this video. Um, I've been play plagued tonight with uh, uh, issues, both the technical, we just had some storms come through here. Um, so yeah, now the crickets are going, so go figure. But I figured that someone was trying to say don't make this video, but... I couldn't resist because, as you see, I went to the comic shop today and picked up the trifecta of suck. Okay, maybe it's maybe that's a little hard. Uh, consider this the uh, devil's hat trick. Um, yeah, there's there's nothing good about this, and I debated which issue I wanted to uh, touch upon. Um, Although I did not do a video review of this, I did read the first issue, and I mentioned it, I think, in the previous Avengers uh, um, video I did. But I'm actually not going to do these ones. I decided I'm going to do West Coast Avengers first because, oh, I had very low expectations for this. So let me get this out of the way here. Oh, oh. <laughs> Quick aside here, when I was picking this up at the comic shop today, uh, the clerk told me that a 12-year-old-ish kid had come in earlier, uh, earlier in the day and said that he picked up this cover, picked up this book, and said, I thought Captain Marvel was a guy. So I guess that whole Carl Manvers thing is, I mean, come on. Maybe the kid watches other videos, but uh, yeah, the whole Captain Marvel is a dude thing. Yeah. Uh, that's a thing, Marvel. So anyway, let's look at this. West Coast Avengers, also known as the people who couldn't carry their own book. <laughs> I loved West Coast Avengers, the original series. Yeah, it sucked when it became Force Wars. It actually kind of sucked near the end. But in the beginning, until just a little bit after Burns Run, it was really good. I loved the book. And let's see who we have here. We have... America Chavez, uh, canceled book. We have the Hawkeyes, canceled books. Gwenpool, who is not bad. I, I actually, I've read some of her books. Um, yeah, she's not bad. Uh, we have Quentin from the X-Men series. He's a jerk. And then we have the new guy, Fuse. Oh, I'm going to be coming back to him. So let's go ahead and flip this open. And, oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, zoom in like this is kind of like the opening of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Uh, that's what it reminds me of. We got the silly uh, K Bishop and West Coast, Best Coast. And oh, Hawkeye can't aim. Uh, this is stupid. Uh, <laughs> so we start off with This Is Yesterday. Uh, Clint is being interviewed um, by this camera crew. And they ask, you know, why Kate Bishop? Uh, isn't she a bit too young to lead? A bit inexperienced? Um, and Clint says, See, that just tells me you know nothing about Kate Bishop. Did you even do research for these questions? Do you know how many times Kate has almost gotten killed for you people? Well, does that mean she's not very good at this? That's a pretty fair point. And, uh... So he says, well, you must not have heard about the Santa Monica land shark. You know. So <laughs> we cut over to this picture. Um, this was four weeks ago. Oh, my God. Can you just imagine how bad this would look? How horrifying this would look if this was a Greg Land <laughs> picture? But anyway, we cut to uh, Kate riding some legged land sharks. Um, you know, if... I, I have to ding this book a point because they didn't run with a joke. What? These are land sharks? Oh, I think they're just dolphins, ma'am. They should have gone with that. <laughs> oh, if you get that reference, uh, you either have a good sense of humor or you're old. Either way, I like you. Um, so Kate is trying to um, herd these uh, land sharks. She's, I don't know how she got up there. Um, and she's calling around, calling for help. She finally gets a hold of Clint, who's just at a, you know, grabbing a bite. Tells him to look at the footage on the TV, and oh, let's see if we can zoom in. Is it going to get it? But basically, it says, "Oh, everything is awful. Somebody do something." And uh, yeah, Clint Barton uh, shares the code name with Kate Bishop. Yes, it's confusing. 
Yeah, it is. I really wish they'd stop doing that. Anyway, uh, uh, Kate has America Chavez teleport and grab Clint to go help. Um, and then she teleports him up into the sky. Um, America, you do know that Clint can't fly, right? Why do you do this stuff? You know, thankfully he happens to land on the land shark that has now two Hawkeyes on it, but... Uh, yeah, not very good. <laughs> we get this uh, opening thing, you know, the intro description. America Chavez, strength, flight, and vulnerability, opens dimensional gateways, likes to kick stuff. She's a pun. They always talk about her punching. Why is it she likes to kick stuff? And in the very next panel, it's, uh, can you please start punching some land sharks back into the sea? So, she flies, ooh, she's getting a little bit of a tuckus there, doesn't she? A little bit of that, uh, that J-Lo booty, boop, boop. Yeah, um, she must have appropriated, you know, her being an alien and all, she must have appropriated the, uh, Latin booty as well. That's her cultural appropriation. Anyway, as you know from other videos, they pretty much ruined this character. I understand she wasn't too bad when she started off, when they first created her. But her last series really colored her, if you'll pardon the unintentional pun. Because even here, we have, Kate is an excellent leader. She'll do anything to save the day. Anything, to be honest. It's shocking she's still alive. Is that really an endorsement? You know, I can kill you with a single punch, right? Yeah, great. Likeable characters, Marvel. Thank you. Oh, and did you notice with between um, uh, Clint and America, we have the... Uh, can you say it? Violation of the show, don't tell. Yes, keep telling us how great she is. Keep giving us that affirmation. Um, remember, this takes place four weeks ago. The... Recorded segments you're seeing here are supposedly yesterday. So we have a month here about what a great leader she is. Uh, keep that in mind. So uh, the two Hawkeyes are basically shooting goop onto the rampaging land sharks. They're running down the streets, but I don't really see them attacking anything. Now they're oceanside. I thought they were just down the regular street before, but... I have never been to Santa Monica, so I don't know. Um, oh, and then we get this. <laughs> the new character, uh, Johnny Watts, which has nothing to do with electricity, a.k.a. Fuse, can change his body to mimic any substance he comes in contact with. First time being a superhero. First time dating a superhero. Doing pretty fine. So then we have him being interviewed, uh, yeah, I've been a superhero for about two minutes. But you're qualified for the team? Uh, I was just trying to help. There are lots of other ways to help, aren't there? I mean, she's my girlfriend, so... Wait, that sounds bad. Can I start over? Um, let's talk about this character for a minute. So basically, he has the powers of Absorbing Man. And he's called Fuse. Now, aren't the SJW types really into Steven Universe, which is all about the gems fusing together, two things becoming one? And taking on the, uh, you know, mimicking substances that you touch, that's not fusing. You know, Marvel, you own the copyright to the name Mimic for a character. You have two Hawkeyes in this book. You can easily have, you know, this Mimic and another Mimic, or... How about, um, Replicate? Has that been used as a superhero name? Because that explains more what he does than Fuse. <sighs> anyway, so, um, we have the Hawkeye still shooting nuts and everything. And then Kate comes up with an idea. And, whoa, we got some man-ass going there. She did not get that America booty. I point this out, the, the man-ass, because when I first read this, I actually thought this was Clint. You know, they both have similar color schemes. You know, he's more purple on black, she's black on purple. So, at a glance, I thought this was supposed to be Clint. Um, so, anyway, here's her great plan. 
she theorizes that she's on the leader of the land sharks, that they're following him. So she shoots an arrow, like a grappling hook type arrow, into one of his fins, and then swings around his mouth. And, oh, this is this is good. This this is good. She then tries to rein the sh the land shark. Now, yeah, people are running, and it doesn't really look like they're eating anyone. But let's think about this for a minute. Let's look. look. She is in front of the dorsal fin. But just behind the head. Um, you know, by way of comparison, let's look at it. You know, so she'd be like right about here on him. Now one, I don't think she's strong enough to control a shark. I don't think she's, if she has a strength. Obviously, Kelly Thompson has never ridden a horse. Because you don't just put a rope in a mouth and you start, you know, guiding it around. You know, the horse, when you get the bit in its mouth, you get the reins, you know, you pull it, you know, this way, you know, and you're getting the horse to go that way. You're getting it to follow its head movements. And you can't just jump on any horse. A horse has to be broken in before you can do that. Um, and even then, a horse's neck can turn. It can, you know, look side to side. Sharks can't really do that. I don't know how this is working. It's, yeah, I know, it's a land shark, it's a made-up animal. Um, I just, I don't know how this plan could ever work. It's a stupid plan. Sharks aren't made that way. Um, so anyway, it hits the building here. So Hawkeye shoots an explosive arrow at the falling building parts. And um, apparently Kelly Thompson doesn't understand science either because when you shoot something like this and it blows up, you have debris, debris that's still suffering from inertia. You know, it's still affected by the force there. So, Clint lands and then Fuse grabbed one piece of rubble. I, that's how he's helping. Anyway, apparently Kate's plan's working is somehow. Um, she's able to rein the uh, the shark and guide them all into the water. And then we get this actually funny bit here where Clint says, wait, now she's going in to be, she's going to be in the ocean with a bunch of giant sharks. It's actually kind of sublime how they have America realize what's going on and takes off, you know, as the guys realize how bad of a problem that is. Woof. Okay, America got her. Day is saved. Everyone is alive. Let's eat. This, this is actually a little funny scene here. Um, and that's one thing. This book, you know, tries to be funny. And sometimes when it, it when it's funny, she actually, it is funny. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit here. Because you're going to see something that they do here. Um, I think I just shot past it. Um, like the one, we have a several pages where the two-page spread, it's read horizontally all the way across. So when we go back to when we're eating, when I first came upon this page, I read it that way. <laughs> when actually it's supposed to be one page, two page. I read it this way, and it almost made the same amount of sense. <laughs> um, it's pretty close. But anyway, Clint is pointing out how leading the sharks into the water is not really the best solution. Because obviously someone created them. You know, they didn't just come up on land and, you know, go on a stampede on their own. So, uh, whoever sent them there, they're going to, whoever sent the, the, the land sharks up are going to send them back. And she needs to be ready. And the West Coast is vulnerable and the villains know it. Um, Clint, I have a question about this. Um, wasn't there the 50 State Avengers Initiative or the U.S. Avengers I could be wrong, that could be no longer a state, but basically every state in the country had their own team of Avengers. Um, and, uh, and even if that's not the case, you're telling me that you founded the West Coast Avengers. You should know, Tony Stark used to be based on the West Coast. Um, Wonder Man was based on the West Coast uh, out in L.A. He may be dead now, I can't keep track anymore. But if the villains know this, why aren't they taking more advantage of it? But here's our great leader going... I know. So yeah, this is, you know, what a great leader she is. 
And she says how she tried calling everybody, but they were either busy, off-planet, or dead. Um, except for her ex-boyfriend, little joke there. Um, so they decide that what they need is they need to run a membership drive. <laughs> now, I love... My favorite, my favorite version of Justice League is the Justice League International. Um, the one with the, the B-listers that was kind of humorous. A lot of people look back and, you know, think that, oh, it's Blue Beetle and Booster Gold, Fire and Ice, you know, it's all blah ha 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 But actually, it balanced seriousness and humor. It actually went back and forth, sometimes a little bit more silly and sometimes a little bit more serious. Um, but it had a good balance. And I think they, I think Kelly might be trying to go with that, in that route with this book. Um... And I have nothing against a humorous book, uh, you know, a fun book. You know, as long as it's funny, I'm okay with it. So I bring that up because this reminds me of the JLI issue where they did the membership drive. Um, that was one of Adam Hughes' first issues, as I recall, if not his first one. Um, it starts off with <coughs> Bread Boy. Um, not, you know, she keeps thinking that he's, he has toast or toast-related powers, but the big thing about him is, you know, why she thinks it's toast, because he has his, his meats coming out here. <laughs> um, but the best thing about him is his battle cry. I'll butter your bread. I'm not sure if this is his aspiration, humor, um, but if it's, okay, I need you to go now. <laughs> the next recruit is a woman who calls herself Diva. And she's there just to meet Click. Um, and so when Kate's asking her, you know, um, you don't, if you don't have any special po powers or special skills, you know, she says, oh, I've got skills. I read this thinking it's just like bragging. I, I didn't think too much about the body language. And then we come down to Kate's reaction. Ew, gross lady. And so Kate decides to tell her that uh, Clint is gay, and she doesn't believe him. And that's how she gets rid of Diva. Now, you know, it's funny. They went with this kind of casting couch joke. Um, it seems kind of weird that, to do this in the whole post-Harvey Weinstein, you know, Me Too hashtag thing. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Kelly Thompson. Yeah, she's a woman. She can make a joke like this. If a guy made a joke like this, he'd be off the book. I, that's uh, You can't do that. That's bad. So back to the recruits. Uh, spider King. Just a guy covered with spiders. So then we get to the next page. And again, more of the uh, substitute uh, superheroes here. Um, the Batman parody. Um, you get down. I like Dr. Mole. I actually kind of like him. He basically has all the all the knowledge of an average doctor. And he looks, I think he'd be a good addition to a team. You should always have a doctor, so <laughs> I do kind of like him. Then we have the female Silver Surfer, who is the Silver Snowboarder, but she only works for snow. And then, uh, they really went for this. You got the flies buzzing around him, wrapped in a giant comforter. The Dutch oven. They... They actually went with that joke. <laughs> that's that's actually kind of not my style of humor, but I thought that was funny. <laughs> and then, of course, the, the Wolverine who has <laughs> steak knives attached to rubber bands. And they're not even good steak knives. <laughs> so, yeah, this is actually, I, I think these jokes stuck. I, she stuck the landing on them. So, um, Gwenpool ends up accidentally joining the team because... She was just there to uh, see Kate before Gwenpool was about to leave town, and uh, and Kate and Kate convinced her to join the team. And Gwen's like, "Wait, are we heroes or villains?" Gwen, we're heroes. Heroes, damn it! Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. I think. So yeah, I <laughs> I, I kind of like this character. I'm not a Deadpool fan, but I do like Gwenpool. So, I'm just going to skip these pages here, because um, now we're up to last week. Remember, she's a great leader. You know, so far she's recruited a team, but they still have no funding. You know, even her boyfriend, oh, I'm sorry, it's not her boyfriend, it's Gwen asking, you know, so is uh, a paycheck coming? 
and uh, Kate uh, says that there's a real dearth of talent. She was hoping for a fifth member. Hawkeye, Clint says, wait, there are five of us. And she says, you said you're not full time. Oh, oh, right. Carry on. I'm not sure why Clint is here, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and that's when we get the fifth member. <sighs> Quinn Choir, Kid Omega. He was created, you know, I'm sure you know, he was created during Morrison's X-Men run. Um, he was supposed to be a douchebag, and, you know, then he died, and I don't know why they brought this character back. He's insanely powerful. He's pretty unlikable. Um, but, like, he does point out they have an underpowered team, and uh, he actually can bring financing because he has the camera crew recording him. You know, he told him he'd be on a superhero team, and um, so basically he's going to get secure the funding, so he has to be on the team. So while we're, he's pointing out the team, you know, definitely no powers, so green is about to sprout, no powers, decent. <laughs> so we're looking at, we have Quentin, who's unlikable. We have America Chavez, who's unlikable. We have two Hawkeyes, um, Gwenpool, who's nuts because, well... She knows she's in a comic book, uh, but to everyone else, she comes off as nuts. And then we have the new guy here, who has only been a hero for, what, a month? And she he's suddenly Kate's boyfriend. So Quinn is not too wrong uh, about his assessment of the team. But like he says, he has a lot to offer um, because financial backing, because of the uh, show. So, let's see. I'm actually going to kind of slide over here to avoid copyright. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But she, uh, Kate, it's finally Kate's turn to be interviewed. And uh, she asks, uh, wait, is this a mockumentary? Is it a movie, a documentary series, or what? And the camera crew says that it has not been decided yet. How is that possible? They just want us filming. They'll look at the raw footage and see how they want to shape it. So while she's doing this, you find that uh, Gwenpool and uh, Quentin are arguing in the background, and there's a nuclear explosion. And during all this, uh, uh, there's construction going on at their new headquarters. You know, Kate's about to lose it. And she and her boyfriend have a, a tender moment where she he says she's incredible. He She says he's incredible. You know, all that affirmation stuff. But it does point out they are moving in a little too quickly. Something on my bed here. Um, so, Quentin, we cut back to Quentin and um, Gwenpool uh, arguing because she has filled his room with 200 wet towels. The reason being that apparently Quentin always leaves the wet towels on the floor of the bathroom. So, he must like that. So, if she fills his bedroom with something he likes, that's awesome. So, it's, it's actually kind of a little funny scene. But, they, uh, they do get, um, there's another, they get an alert that there's another incident in Santa Monica. So, America teleports them there. And, strangely enough, the camera crew did not go. Only they went. And, you know, the regular book, I didn't count the pages, but this feels like it would be the end of the book, you know, to turn the page with a cliffhanger, but it's not. Um, they look up, and they see Tigra. <laughs> Tigra is also from the West Coast Avengers. I love Greer. I like this character. Interestingly, as a cat, she's in the water, something Greer herself doesn't like. Um, and she's also, in case you didn't notice, about 200 feet tall. Let me pull back a little bit here to the full page. Um, so, uh, here's where Kate actually has to be, um, a leader. Now, remember, they've been talk they've been talking about what a great leader she is, and here's about the only time we actually see her leading, and this is happening right now, um, as she says, uh, uh, but Tigra is not only a hero, she's a legend, one of the original West Coast Avengers. Uh, she's a good guy, regardless of how this looks, we're only using non-lethal force. Quentin is surprisingly pragmatic here. Easiest thing for me to is just, just mentally shut her down. And then what? Does she ever come back from that? And that's if she doesn't drown in the ocean while she's out. I said non-lethal. 
So America grabs Clint per Kate's orders to go up there to try and reason with Tigra because you know Tigra and Clint are friends. They're on this West Coast Avengers together. Quentin goes up with them. And so Tigra is not responding. She's just pretty much feral. You know, the typical I know you're in there type thing, which is what Clint keeps trying to do. And <laughs> Quentin, who is arguably the strongest member of the team, gets knocked the F out. It's just knocked over <laughs> um, toward the building. So while Gwen is trying to commandeer a car to go catch up, she sees Quentin flying. She changes the setting on her gun from very extremely lethal to cream puff and shoots a thing to uh, to shield his, you know, break the impact. And, uh, of course, this annoys Gwenpool. Gwenpool, who works for MODOK and finds Quentin even more annoying than working for a supervillain. So, <laughs> Tiger grabs a boat and uh, swings at America, grabs Hawkeye, Clint, and Clint is still doing the whole, you know, fight it, I know you're in there type speech while America's hitting Tigra. And when she hits Tigra, Tigra throws the boat. And America does something I think is kind of clever here. She teleports, you know, she makes one of her teleport stars, gets in front of the boat as it's, if you turn it this way, you get a better idea, as it's about to land on a building. So... You know, the teleport part was the clever part. This is where America then just has to punch the boat. Again, Callie Thompson does not seem to understand physics. Uh, the boat breaks in half. Um, you know, at least we see the break in half. Maybe it broke more. All this debris is still going to be affected by our friend Inertia and rain down upon this building. <laughs> so... I don't know how big she can make these stars. Why didn't she just teleport the boat? Could she do that? Or are they only this big? Um, yeah, not a good plan, America. I know the whole, you know, punching because she's so woke. And yeah, no, this is twice now she's made things worse here. Um, I take it back. I think that's only once. Um, it was Hawkeye blown up stuff before. I stand corrected. I correct myself. So one last chance of the, I know you're in here, you know, fight this, don't do this, this isn't you. Um, Tigra tosses Clint off. <laughs> Sorry, this is like the fourth time I've, turned, I've done this video and I didn't realize what I said. <clears throat> Clint, Clint gets thrown by Tigra over her shoulder. And once again, one of these goop things that they all have the arrows for. Um, Kate saves Clint from uh, falling. So while they're kind of regrouping and trying to figure out what their next plan is to take on Tigra, this douchebag shows up with the uh, swimmer's body and gold tan and oversized head. And he comes up, sweep, sweeps Kate off her feet and kisses her. Um, Basically performs sexual assault on her. But I think it's okay if he just, a stranger comes up and randomly kisses her. Because even though he has kind of a big head, he's hot. You know, he's muscular. I think that's okay. You know, it's only if you don't like a stranger that kisses you uh, at sexual assault. But if you find him attractive, I think that's how this works. Hey, listen, I'm just trying to figure out these rules. So, um... So they're trying to figure out who this guy is. He's there to save the day because he is Brodoc. The biorobotic organism designed overwhelmingly for kissing. And Gwenpool pretty much sums up the reaction. So yeah, the preview then is for the next uh, issue. Um, who is Brodoc? Why the perfectly luscious locks? Why the sultry seaside tan? Why the handsome head that's maybe just a little too big? Why the eerily familiar acronym? Surely nothing sinister will come from inviting him back to West Coast Avengers headquarters, right? I, I actually think it's going to turn out that he's actually not a bad guy. Yeah, there's going to be some connection with the MODOK, you know, the name, the oversized head. But I have a feeling that he's going to be a 
genuinely good guy. Maybe like he kind of reminds me of Rocky Horror, doesn't he? You know, I have a feeling it's going to be some type of creation like that, not intentionally evil. No, the evil ones that I'm calling it right now. Um, the camera crew, the camera crew are working for the bad guys. Um, that's what we're going to find out that this whole big out that's being funded was to get all these people together um, because they're going to have some type of plot for whatever sinister mastermind and fuse. I I have a suspicion about him. He's a new character. Um, he was just brought in. He just started being a hero, so no one knows him. Um, he's Kate's boyfriend, so that's going to try and make it seem like he automatically has been vetted. I have a feeling that he's going to be the mole. Uh, not Dr. Mole. Dr. Mole. Dr. Mole is awesome. No, I have a feeling that this dude is going to be related to the bad guys or he's going to turn on them. So, yeah, I don't trust him. I don't trust the camera crew. These are the ones, these are the villains of the story. And um, maybe Kate, Kate's man ass too. But, no, it's definitely these guys. Don't don't pay attention to Brodock. Look elsewhere. Look at these. That's who's going to be the bad guys. I'm calling it now. So, yeah, summing up, I actually expected this book to be a lot worse than it was. Is it great? No. Is it good? No. It's like just hitting that level of okay. However, what really cuts it is that $5 price point. Yikes. Now, it is a bigger issue, granted. Um, you know, like I said, I think it was... You know, just when you read comic books enough, you kind of know the page count when you should be about at the end. So it's not, it doesn't feel double-sized, but, um, yeah, the pacing on it is actually not bad. Um, and when, uh, Kelly is making jokes, they tend to hit. She, she was sticking the landings on them more often than not. And this scene in particular, <laughs> it was probably the funniest scene to me, um. I, I don't know why. Maybe I'm a sucker for it. It's really America flying off that sells it for me. But yeah, we have a group of characters that are all from failed books. Um, you know, half the team is unlikable. Um, so you can't even have a straight guy on it. And when I say straight guy, I don't mean like sexually. I mean like, you know, the straight man to play off of the comedic. Um, so yeah, why the two hotheads? Why why it's Gwenpool and uh, Quentin going against each other? It should be these two. Um, so yeah, this issue is... <sighs> I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, I may have mentioned it. Uh, I don't know if this is the first issue of an ongoing series. I don't know if it's a mini-series because, again, Marvel... All their books are miniseries now because they either go until they're canceled within the first year or two, or within a year or two, they get rebooted with another number one. So I don't know if this is a short limited series or if it's an ongoing. I'm going to pick up issue number two. I am cautiously optimistic. Um, but then again, I said that about X21, X21, X23 number one, and the second issue turned out to be hot garbage. So, if Kelly can, can keep up the humor, I think this ha I think this might have a chance. It's not there yet. Um, I feel like we need to see where this is going. But there is some humor. Again, this dude, don't believe his lies. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll get my technical issues straightened out. Hopefully, the storms are done. So, I can come back to Avengers. So we can see how She-Hulk just keeps getting bigger. Alright, once again, thanks for watching.